Hey everyone, it's Kenji, and we're gonna make an iceberg wedge salad. Ooh, I'm gonna wipe off my lid. Um, so the reason I I'm making this is because, well, I bought a head of le iceberg lettuce because I was gonna make some burgers for another video, which may have already gone up. The video may have gone up, or maybe it'll go up at some point, one way or the other. Um, but you don't really need that much iceberg lettuce for some burgers, so um, I, you know, whenever you have an extra head of iceberg lettuce. Uh, making a wedge salad is a good way to use it up. It's a nice, simple, summery meal. Um, all right, so I got this slab bacon. Um, this is from a shop here in Seattle called Lorsan, um, which is French for the urchin, even though they don't really sell, well, I guess they do sell a lot of seafood, but anyhow, they make, they make their own bacon there and it's exceptionally good. Um, so iceberg wedge, you could, you could of course use sliced, sliced bacon anyway, um, from the supermarket if you want. Um, so diced up bacon. Gonna get it going in this carbon steel skillet that I've had preheating over low heat. Um, you can use any kind of, it doesn't, you don't have to use carbon steel. I'm just using it because, well, I like, whenever I'm cooking bacon, I like to do it in my cast iron or carbon steel because it helps the seasoning. Um, and because carbon steel also, you know, it's, it's heavy, it's dense. When you preheat it properly, it's really good for cooking things nice and slowly like this. It's also good for it's also good for um, searing carbon steel. Everyone should own a carbon steel skillet, lighter than cast iron, but with a lot of cast iron's properties. All right, so we're gonna let that bacon go. Jesus, I'm gonna keep jumping out. I'm gonna get that, let that bacon go a little bit. We wanna kind of slowly render it out. Meanwhile, I'm gonna get my blue cheese dressing going. So I'm doing this with a bunch of stuff that I just happen to have around. Um, you know, I didn't do any special shopping for this uh, particular um, particular recipe. Um, but I'll tell you what you can use if you don't um, have what I have. So I have this lemon aioli that I made for um, crab cakes the other day. Um, that video, I'm pretty sure is up already, so I'll link to that. But I, I made this lemon aioli for crab cakes the other day. If you don't have homemade lemon aioli, you can use some minced garlic, um, store-bought mayo, and a squeeze of lemon juice instead for your blue cheese dressing. That'll work well. Okay, and then I'm gonna use a little bit of um, this yogurt. Um, typically, blue cheese dressing you would do with buttermilk, um, but if you don't have buttermilk, like I don't, you can just use yogurt, which is what I'm doing here. Yogurt, we can thin it out with just a little bit of water because yogurt is much thicker than buttermilk. Um, yeah, and you can use, you could use water, you could use milk, you could use cream, you know, whatever, whatever you got. So about half and half mayo and yogurt with just a touch of water to loosen it up. Blue cheese crumbles. About an equal part of there, equal part there as well. I'm gonna use my tiny whisk. I know this time my tiny whisk is not as tiny as some other famous tiny whisks. Whoops, man, I'm spilling everything today. My tiny whisk is not as tiny as some other famous tiny whisks on the internet, but um, I bet I've had mine longer. I've had this tiny whisk since hmm, 2000. Two? I've had this since like one of my first restaurant jobs. When was my first restaurant job? 1999 was my first restaurant job. This is like my, my first serious restaurant job when I saw other people had tiny whisks and I was like, oh man, I gotta get me a, I gotta get me a tiny whisk if I'm gonna be serious. And so I did. It's a, it's a 20 year old tiny whisk there. All right. All right, so our bacon fat's going. We got our dressing made. I'm gonna dice up some tomatoes, which I like in my wedge salad. I got these cherry tomatoes. I'm not gonna do my normal thing about why cherry tomatoes are better than big tomatoes in the off season, because I'm sure you've all heard of that. And if not, check the description. I'll link to, I'll link to a couple of videos where I, I talked about uh, why cherry tomatoes taste better than large tomatoes in the off season. It's because of the square cube law. Just chunk them up like this. Um, now, one of the tricks of this particular recipe, um, so I'm using actually my buddy Daniel Gritzer, 
at Serious Eats, um, who is a brilliant recipe developer and great cook. Um, he developed this recipe for um, an iceberg wedge salad a few years ago and published it. And I thought it was genius because it does what I think is absolutely essential every time you cook bacon, which is use up, you know, find ways to work that bacon fat into the dish. Um, so what he does, I'd say those bacon bits are done. What he does is he, once the bacon is cooked, I'll show you what's gonna happen. So I'm just gonna get these bacon bits out. And then once that bacon is cooked, you have all this wonderful rendered bacon fat left in the pan. And you could just save it, you know, like my mom used to keep one of those little pots of bacon grease um, on the side of her stove. Maybe your, maybe your parents did that. Maybe you do that yourself. Um, you could just save it and use it for whenever you want to cook something with bacon fat, like, I don't know, when you want, when you want to uh, make croutons or when you want to fry eggs. Um, but what we're doing instead is we're going to take breadcrumbs. Um, actually, you know what I'm, I am going to do is I'm going to pour out some of that bacon fat into this thing so that it cools a little. Because I'm going to incorporate it into my dressing. Um, and then for the rest, we're going to take these breadcrumbs. This is just a stale hot dog bun that I, um, it's a homemade hot dog bun, a stale homemade hot dog bun that I kind of um, ground up in the food processor. Um, and we're going to fry that in the bacon fat. And we're going to use this to garnish the salad as well. So we get another sort of crunchy textural element as well as another way to make sure that we get that nice flavor from the from the bacon fat in there. All right, so we're getting pretty close to done here. I'm gonna do a scallion, because I like scallions. And well, actually it's really just because I had it. Um, you could do, you know, chives, parsley, you could do diced red onion, and you could do nothing at all. I am going to repeat the thing that I'm sure you've heard me say before, which is that I think people who claim that iceberg lettuce has no flavor are nuts. Um, it does have flavor. It's sweet. It's a little bitter. It's not, it's not just about that crunchy texture. You know, the crunchy texture obviously is one of the main selling points of iceberg lettuce, but um, it, it certainly has flavor as well. I like to take, out the take off the outer two layers of leaves so that you're exposed to completely like this dark green, this, these, those dark green bits, um, I'm not crazy about those, so I like exposing a nice sort of yellowish green core for my wedge salads. We're gonna do a whole quarter head, I think. Quarter head per person is about a right, the right serving. This is just me eating right now, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna put it on an absurdly large plate. Tiny whisk, large plate, those are things you learn at like fine dining restaurants. Hmm. Sweet. Hmm. Burnt. All right. Close to burnt. Let's leave those more burny looking bits uh, right there in the pan. Hmm. All right. So almost done. Um, last thing that this dressing can use is some, uh, I like plenty of black pepper in mine. Yeah, great. The mayo is well seasoned, um, and the blue cheese is quite salty, so you, typically with a blue cheese dressing, if you're using either store-bought or homemade mayo, you don't really need to add any salt to it. Spoon it over the top generously. You know what else this really works well with instead of, if you're not like an iceberg lettuce fan, what's really good is blue cheese dressing and all of the same sort of wedge salad fixings on a grill, on grilled cabbage. So you can cut cabbage, a, a head of green cabbage into a wedge just like this 
rub it with a little bit of olive oil and then grill it and then serve it with all the same um, toppings and it is delicious. I actually, I'll link to it. I have a recipe for grilled cabbage with a, a number of different topping suggestions uh, that I did for Serious Eats a while back. All right, scallions, tomatoes. Oops, I meant to add this bacon fat to my mayo and I didn't. Well, that's, that just means the next person to get a salad tonight will have more bacony dressing dressing than I do. That's all right. Yeah. All right. Let's do some bacon bits and some of these delicious bacony croutons or breadcrumbs. All right. I'd say we're just about done. Does that look good? Looks good to me. And shall we give it a shot? Hmm. Heck yeah. Right, I know you guys, dogs are gonna want a little bacon. And a little tomato. You good, buddy. All right, guys, gals, non-binary pals. This is a classic wedge salad with some upgrades. It's, it's a wedge salad, but better. Um, all right, hope you like that. See you later, bye-bye. Hey everyone, it's Kenji. There are 22 million kids in this country that rely on school lunches for nutritious meals. And with schools closed now more than ever, organizations like No Kid Hungry can use their support. So I'm asking you to join me. Uh, click the link in the description below to donate some money. No amount is too small or too big. Thank you very much and stay safe. Bye-bye.